Shalom. Bless the Lord, everybody. closer you get to them, sometimes expectations you have of them, sometimes they disappoint you dearly. Sometimes they forsake you, sometimes they leave you. You know, like family, like spouses, like girlfriends, like boyfriends, you know, even children. But I want you to be assured of this in Jesus Christ, that you will never be bitter. Remember all his disciples, all of them forsook him and ran. But he loved them and his gift of life to them was so that they could live and understand and live beyond what they were doing. Just bear that in mind in your Christian walk that God wants to get you to that part, that, that place. And also that he doesn't want you to forsake him either. He doesn't want you to forsake him. He doesn't want you to forsake them. Just think about that for a minute. God bless. Yeah, 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 I got like 20 seconds, and I'm in the bathroom. Place of cleaning, washing, right? I got a little something extra. 20 seconds, right? I got like 10 now. Reconciliation, man. Ain't no joke. It takes time. So remember that. God. Yeah, grace and peace be to the most high all the time. This is what I want to say also. You know, a lot of times we want to talk about other people and what they've done to us. We, we never see what we did to other people. You know what I'm saying? We never look at that. We never. It's like we're perfect. We're not. So, the other thing I have to say on all of that is that we examine our hearts and how, what did we do? What did we do in the whole situation? I just thought I'd share that with you and with the rest of the public on YouTube. Blessings be to you all. Leave your comments right down below there. Leave your, <laughs> leave your comments in the comment section below. How you feel about that. God bless you all. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you all. I got some scripture here I want you to take a look at. First of all, we know that it is written that man shall not live by bread alone. Every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Awesome. 
And right now, I want to just continue what I was saying about forgiveness, reconciliation, and that sometimes it's a process. It doesn't happen overnight. Here's the instruction about it. If you check Matthew chapter 5, verses 21 to 26, it says, You have heard that it was said to those of old, You shall not murder, and whoever murders will be in danger of the judgment. But I say to you, and whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause, shall be in danger of the judgment, and whoever says to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. But whoever says, Thou, you fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you. Leave your gift there before the altar. Go your way. First be reconciled to your brother. Then come and offer your gift. Agree with your adversary quickly while you are in the way with him. Lest your adversary deliver you to the judge and the judge hand you over to the officer and you be thrown into prison. Assuredly, I say to you, you will by no means get out of there till you have paid the last penny. Got more scriptures for you, right? Matthew 5, we're looking now at 38 all the way down to uh, 48. It says, You've heard it has been said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I tell you to not to resist an evil person, and whoever slaps you on your right cheek, turn the other to him also. If anyone wants to sue you and take away your tunic, let him have your cloak also. Whoever compels you to go one mile, go with him too. Give to him who asks you, and from him who wants to borrow from you, do not turn away. You have heard that it is said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. That you may be sons of your Father in heaven, for he makes his son to rise on the evil and the good, and sends rain on the just and the unjust. Now, if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brethren only, what do you do more than others? Do not even the tax collectors do so? Therefore, be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. I'll add, because it's also found in the book of Luke, be merciful. As your Father in heaven is merciful. God bless you all. I got more. There's lots on this. Matthew chapter 6, 14, 15. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. This is at the end of the Lord's Prayer. But if you do not forget men their trespasses, neither would your Father forgive you your trespasses. Going on a little bit in a minute. This has to do with prejudging people without talking issues to them. If they have offended you, you may be presumptuous. It says, judge not that you be not judged. That means, if you don't want to be judged, don't judge nobody. And further, you know, in the scriptures you will check and you see judge righteously. Alright, here we go. For with the judgment you judge, you shall be judged. With the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. Why do you look at a speck in your brother's eye, but do not consider the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me remove the speck from your eye, and look, there is a plank in your own eye? Hypocrite, first remove the plank from your own eye, then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Okay? You got that? That's the same thing I was talking about, how, you know, we sometimes are bitter with other people about things, but we also have issues with the Lord, and we also have problems. Where they should be bitter with us, okay? God bless. Now, I really want to go through Matthew chapter 18. In particular, I want to read from verses. Um, I want to read from verses 12 all the way down to verses 18, okay? All right, cool. Here we go. Verse 12. You might not be able to see this. But anyway. 11. For the Son of Man has come to save that which is lost. What do you think? If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them goes astray, does he not leave the ninety-nine and go to the mountains to seek that one astray? 
And if you should find it, surely I say to you, he rejoices more over that sheep than over the ninety-nine that did not stray. Now let me tell you a little something about the will of God, folks. Verse 14, even so, it is not the will of your Father who is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. Moreover, if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he or she hears you, you have gained your brother or sister. But if he will not hear, take with you one or two more, that by the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. Got that? Showing you how reconciliation works. If he refuses to hear them, he or she, tell it to the church. Now if he or she refuses even to hear the church, let him be to you like a heathen and a tax collector. Assuredly, I say unto you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. God bless you all. Now what's the power of reconciliation? What's the power of it? What's the power of of forgiveness. You know why we forgive and reconcile? I'll give you one explanation. There's probably a hundred million. One of the reasons is because when you reconcile with people, you get to work through with them as one. And there's a power in many becoming one. Here's the power. God resides in it. It is the most high. Assuredly, I say unto you, Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, I say to you, he's repeating the same thing in another form, that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am in the midst of them. You know, the Bible is an interesting thing. It's got like layers, like an onion. It's got many explanations to one text. And Jesus himself did that. But what's awesome about this is it's saying, if you reconcile to your brother, your sister, whoever it is, and you guys are in one mind, and you pray for anything. In fact, when you guys reconcile, it's bound. So if you forgive your brother, it's bound in heaven. And when you, you forgive your brother, you're one with your brother again. Y'all are not separated. Another word for separation is divorce. I use this word very a lot these days because I see so much people trying to find an answer to something, but they're just doing the, they're just messing it up more because they don't have God directing them. The whole point of separation is to bring back together. We were separated from God, and He brought us to Himself. The brethren who get disfellowship from the church are separated for a period, but they're supposed to come back. Their whole intent, God said it himself, he didn't intend for people to be lost. The will of God, that is, is that all men should be saved. So, those people do not know what the will of God is. I'm telling you what his will is. And in the Bible, it's written many different places, so you can check it out what the will of God is specifically for specific things. Check it out. Read the word. Or go to Bible Gateway and type in will of God. And see how much stuff comes up. God bless you all. Bye.